The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. Now, this is a great book on how to really embrace ourselves. So if you feel that you're not enough, if you feel you're not worthy, if you struggle to own yourself, to own your story, if you feel like you want to be someone else, if you are seeking perfectionism as the answer to all your problems, if you feel that you are imperfect while everyone else around you seems to be perfect, if you hate parts about yourself, well then this is a book that you must read. This is a highly recommended book. And the reason why I recommend this book, this book is for anyone for everyone unless you are an enlightened being unless you are not struggling with this issue of being truly authentic this book is for you because we're all human we're all in this together none of us are about this we all struggle with being ourselves completely so this book has a lot of great stories and metaphors and i'll put a link to the to the book in the description below but make sure to check out the complete book in this video we're going to talk about a few of my favorite ideas uh, the book has a lot more great ideas and the author Brene Brown is a researcher on this topic she's a PhD leading expert on shame authenticity and belonging and this book is a New York Times bestseller so let's jump into the book let's talk about gifts of imperfection and the really uh, the basic idea of the book it all boils down to being enough to knowing that you are enough you are maybe imperfect you are vulnerable you are afraid but you are human and you are enough. Even while you're imperfect, even while you're vulnerable, even while you're afraid, you're courageous, you're strong, and you're worthy of love. That, I think the words worthy of love are probably the most difficult words for most people to accept that I am worthy of love from others, that I am enough as I am, rather than thinking about the fact that until I am perfect, I cannot be worthy of love. In some ways, the book is about completely owning ourselves, owning our story, uh, which is one of the most difficult things to do. And in the book Presence, Amy Curry, Dr. Amy Curry talks about the idea that presence and power ultimately are all about completely owning ourselves even in the most challenging situations, in the most difficult situations, being completely who we are. And only the most powerful people can actually be completely who they are because they are unafraid. They do not think that they're not afraid of what others think of them and that is the key to true power to know that i am going to be myself i'm going to completely own myself in this situation and if you want a complete summary of presence it's in our mental toughness program in the 2x mental toughness program the link will be in the description below now the other key to wholehearted living is to never trade in your authenticity for approval this might be one of my favorite lines from the book don't trade in your authenticity for approval. And this is something we're all guilty of. Because what we do is, instead of being authentic in any given situation, we try to get approval for someone and we lose our authenticity. Because when we stop, here's the thing, when we stop believing in our worthiness, we start hustling for it. Another great line from this book, when we stop believing in our worthiness, we start hustling for it. Because when we don't believe we are worthy, we start to look for approval. We start to hustle for approval. We start to get worthiness from others, from the outside world. So you should not trade your authenticity for approval, for safety. And that's when you need courage. You need the courage to be your own self, to be completely authentic. And again, in the book Presence, Dr. Amy Curry talks about the idea that authenticity in some ways is the essence of presence. It is the essence of power because every time you're seeking approval is when you lose all your power. Every time you're seeking approval, you lose authenticity and you lose your power in the situation. Now, here's the challenge. We, we never arrive at this place. We never arrive where we completely own ourselves. We never arrive at this place when we are truly authentic and we are completely courageous and strong and worthy of life. It's a journey. It's a lifelong journey. It's never a destination. We have to practice this every single day. The values that we need to practice every single day are, the, these values are required for us to live a wholehearted life. So don't be dis discouraged in some ways. It is a lifelong process. This is a lifelong process of living wholeheartedly. Now, one of the most important things that gets in the way of living wholeheartedly is shame. Shame is what keeps us from 
from living wholeheartedly. Shame is the fear of not being loved for who we are or feeling that we're flawed and hence unworthy of people's uh, love or feeling like only if they knew the real me or if they knew the real story, they would never like me. All of those things. Uh, it's, it's the exact opposite of owning yourself in some ways. And shame will show up in many different ways. You might think, what will people think of me that I'm not good enough yet, that I'm pretending that it's all okay or I, I'll pretend it's all okay even though it's not. And Or sometimes it's also maybe the imposter syndrome saying, who do you think you are? And in order to handle shame, we literally have to develop emotional intelligence. And that's an idea that's covered in great detail in the book, Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman. We have a animation summary of it and I'll link, I'll link it up here, right here. Now, here's the thing. In order to handle shame, we have to also understand that this is a universal experience. We all have it. We have to have self-compassion towards ourselves. And Dr. Kristen Neff talks about this idea in the book, Self-Compassion. And one of the best ways to handle shame is to shed light on it, as in talk about it, bring it out in the open. Because when you do bring it out in the open, shame does not not survive that easily. So realize one of the biggest challenges to your wholehearted living endeavor will always be challenged by your idea of shame of you feeling not worthy enough in many different ways. All right, so now let's jump into a lot of big ideas of how to live wholeheartedly in some ways. And one of the keys, the ultimate value in life that we all must embrace. Now, I have always talked about the idea that courage is one of the greatest values in life, in my life. And Brene Brown talks about the idea too that courage is something that we need in order to live a wholehearted life. So if you know your values and if you are aware of your values, I hope courage is in there. Maybe if it's not, think about how you can practice courage on a daily basis because courage is a practice. Now here's what Mary Daly said about courage. She said, courage is like a habit, a virtue. You get it by courageous acts. It's like you learn to swim by swimming. You learn courage by couraging. And you probably heard me say it multiple times. I always say you have to do courage. It's not something you have. It's something you do. I mean, courage can be something. Courage can be really simple. We have to constantly practice courage. There is no other way around it. We aren't born with courage just because we have to use it every single day in order to be able to uh, make it a reality. We have to be able to use it every single day in order to make it a reality in our life. So we have to practice courage. We have to practice courage because courage is a, one of the keys to wholehearted living. We have to courageously present ourselves in front of the world in order to be wholehearted. Another big idea, another key is to be able to um, have compassion, self-compassion and self-acceptance in some ways. And uh, in the book, uh, The Power of Self-Compassion, Dr. Kristen Neff talks about this idea in great detail that compassion really, I mean, self-compassion is all about accepting ourselves because the more we can accept ourselves, the more compassionate we become towards ourselves. And also not only that, we also become compassionate towards others because then we start to see the common humanity we start to see that everyone else is suffering that everyone else is going through the same challenges the same problems and here's a here's a really simple way to look at it only when we know the faults and darkness inside of us can we be compassionate towards others really powerful idea only when we know the faults and darkness inside of us can we be compassionate towards others so only when we know only when we can be self-compassionate can we be compassionate towards under others only when we are self-accepting can we be compassionate towards others and i have a podcast interview i did with uh, dr kristen neff and i'll leave that link in this mind map here so when you uh, by the way grab this mind map by clicking here right here on the i button so that you can have all these links and you can uh, check out this podcast interview as well all right another big idea by the way you should get this mind map or you can go to 2000books.com slash self to get this mind map so that you have access to all these ideas at your fingertips anytime. So click on the I button above to get the mind map or just go to 2000books.com slash self. And just follow along with me. Even if you get the mind map, come back to this video and follow along with me in this video. All right, the third big idea I want to talk about is authenticity. Authenticity in some ways is the greatest accomplishment. Here's a quote that I put out on Twitter sometime back by Ralph Waldo Emerson from his book Essays. He said, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you someone else is the greatest accomplishment. Wow, wow. What he's trying to say is that 
we are constantly being bombarded by the society to be someone else, to try. You know, the society does not want us to be ourselves. The society does not want us to be unique. The society constantly wants us to be homogenized. That's what Paul Getty, J. Paul Getty, the, the billionaire, he talked about it in his book, How to Get Rich, How to Be Rich. He talks about the idea that the world is constantly trying to homogenize you, but your job is to be yourself in this world that's constantly forcing you to be someone else. And that's what Ralph Waldo Emerson says as well. To be yourself in a world that's constantly trying to make you some, someone else is the greatest accomplishment. In some ways, this is the essence of the book. This is the essence of this whole book, The Gifts of Imperfection. Because if we can be ourselves, if we can be truly authentic, then we are living wholeheartedly because we are completely owning ourselves. We are saying I'm enough and we're not trading in our authenticity for approval. And it's, it's like, it's a meta level idea. It is one of the most powerful things we can learn to do for ourselves. It's also a very difficult thing to learn but hopefully we all get to learn it over time the key is to let the people let the people around you see your true self and stop trying to be someone else instead own your story or you own yourself right have the courage to be imperfect remember we talked about the idea of courage how courage is the ultimate value right courage is the ultimate value and it is really important to understand that we have to have the courage to be imperfect because courage is required for us to be ourselves in face of a society that's constantly trying to change us right all right so our goal is truly to be authentic and to be authentic is a process it's not a final destination that we arrive at when we seek authenticity and people don't like us it is still okay when we are trying to be authentic and others don't approve of us, it's still okay because we accomplished our goal of being authentic. So always make authenticity your goal. Don't make approval or acceptance your goal because when we make approval or acceptance our goal and when we seek them and we don't get approval, we think I'm not good enough. We are going to try and be authentic and that is a goal that is worthy all by itself. It's Remember, it's a lifelong process. It's a journey, not a destination. It's a, it's a lifelong process. So we have to trade in that uh, fear for authenticity, for courage. All right. The next big idea that I'm a big fan of is that perfectionism is all perfectionism is a very dangerous thing. Perfectionism is all about seeking approval. A lot of people think perfectionism is uh, is the same as trying to be your very best, but that's not the case. In truth, what we're trying to do is hide ourselves. We're trying to protect ourselves. What happens is when perfectionism shows up, it shows it slows us down. It even cripples us from taking action. It is all really about trying to earn approval and acceptance from others. That's what perfectionism becomes. It's a mask we're wearing where we're constantly trying to earn approval and acceptance from others. And it is one of the most dangerous things because we start to associate our self-worth with our accomplishment. Now, if you want to learn how to become more of an imperfectionist and let go of this constant need to be a perfectionist, then I highly recommend you check out the book, How to Be an Imperfectionist by Stephen Geis. I have a podcast interview with him and I have the, I'll have the i have the link in this mind map as well. So make sure you get the mind map. You can click on the i button here to get this mind map and get all these links as well. And I have also done a full summary of this book, How to Be an Imperfectionist in our 2x productivity program. So check it out. It's a complete nuts and bolts guide to how to be an imperfectionist in life. So it's a really good read along with the gifts of imperfection. All right. So here's the thing. When when we're trying to be a perfectionist, it's very scary to make mistakes, right? When we are constantly being a perfectionist, we're very scared of making mistakes. And hence, and that and what happens is because our whole self-worth is on the line. And we think that if we don't succeed at it, we have no self-worth. In some ways, this is this idea is also closely related to the book Mindset by Carol Dweck, in which she talks about the idea of the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. A perfectionist is actually taking on the fixed mindset. I have to be perfect every single moment because that's when my self, because every single moment, my self-worth is on the line. While someone with a growth mindset doesn't really believe in perfectionism and because they realize they're always evolving, they're always getting better, they're always improving. Um, the perfectionists always think, hey, if I'm perfect, I won't be judged, I won't fail, and hence, it is a great place to be. But perfection is a very dangerous place because it keeps us stuck. Now, here's the thing. Self-compassion is a necessary component 
of perfectionism. And in the book, Self-Compassion, Dr. Kristen Neff talks about the three components of self-compassion, which is self-kindness, understanding that we're all going through the same thing. We're all suffering in some ways and also a mindfulness practice. So the three components of self-compassion. We talked about that in the interview as well with Dr. Kristen Neff. And I have the link for that earlier in the right here, earlier in this uh, video here. I have a podcast interview with Kristen Neff, with Dr. Kristen Neff. So you can listen to that if you want to delve deeper into uh, how to be self-compassionate. All right, the next big idea, the next big idea we're, we're going to talk about is understanding that we have to develop emotional awareness, not only positive emotional awareness, but also negative emotional awareness. We can't just run away from negative emotions and only want positive emotions. That's not how it works. And in the book, Emotional Intelligence, Dr. Daniel Goldman talks about the idea is that it's not our goal is not to be free of anxiety or any other challenging emotions forever, but our goal is to be able to observe them and to be able to harness the power of these emotions, to be able to manage these emotions according to the situation in hand, rather than let these emotions literally run our life. And I have an animated summary of emotional intelligence as well. The link is right here in this mind map. Make sure to grab the mind map by clicking on the I, I button here. Also, another book, The Upside of Your Dark Side, uh, Todd Cashdan talks about the same idea that we have to be able to handle those dark emotions. And not only that, we have to be able, we can actually use those uh, emotions. We just have to make sure we're aware of those emotions. We can use those emotions to our benefit. And again, I have a podcast interview with Tard, and the link is right here in this mind map. So when you grab the mind map, you should be able to listen to this podcast interview as well. All right. Another great idea that we're going to talk about is that we can't numb selectively. Just like we talked about the fact that we have to become aware of our negative emotions, we also have to realize that we can't just numb our negative emotions and fully experience the positive emotions. We can't just numb all the uh, fear or vulnerability or pain or suffering or shame and then fully experience the joy and the happiness. That's not possible. We have to be able to handle both because when we numb the dark side, we also numb the light. When we numb the pain, we also numb the joy. So we have to be able to live with both. And again, in the book, The Upside of Your Dark Side, Dr. Todd Kashdan and I talk about this idea in a lot of great detail. So again, that interview is in this uh, mind map as well. All right, another great idea that we're gonna talk about. Uh, before we go into the great idea, let me just remind you that if you want to grab this mind map, just go to 2000books.com slash self, or just click right here on the I button. This mind map, it's so good because you get a whole, like a 10,000 feet overview of the whole book of some of my best ideas. And you can see just all the major points and then you can click through whatever idea you want to you just want to click through those ideas remind yourself of all the great ideas from this book and you can uh, click out of them really quickly it's so quick that's what I love about, about mind maps they're so quick in your able in being able to grab all this information so 2000books.com slash self to get the mind map or just click on the i button here in the top right corner to get the mind map all right next big idea next big idea is resilience now resilience is crucial to becoming wholehearted. Now there's a, a lot of research on hope and hope is directly correlated with resilience in some ways. Snyder did a lot of research on it and he says there are three key components to hope goals, pathway, and agency. What that says is that in order to have hope, we must set realistic goals and then we must have a pathway. We must believe that we can figure out a way to get to those goals. And also we must believe in our agency. We must believe that it can be done. We must believe that we can make it happen. So goals, pathway, and agency, those are the three components of hope in some ways uh, as hope is related to resilience, right? Okay, so the next uh, thing about resilience is understanding that resilience is not about things being easy. Things are not supposed to be easy. Uh, things will be hard. Uh, it, we have to understand that things will be hard, and but we can still figure them out. And in the book, uh, Grid, Dr. Angela Duck Duckworth talks about a lot of great research on how we can develop resilience. And we have the full video summary in our 2X Mental Toughness program of Grid and a lot of other great books as well. All right, so the next key idea I want to talk about is probably the meta-level idea in some ways on this whole book, and that is understanding that the ultimate key for wholehearted living, and this is something where I think uh, Brene Brown missed the mark, but ultimate key for wholehearted living really boils down to meditation. If there's one meta-level practice above everything else, it is 
wholehearted living. Um, you know, joy, letting go of perfectionism, anxiety, awareness, and management, resilience, uh, rest, gratitude. All of these are benefits of meditation. I mean, all of these things can be cultivated. All these ideas can be cultivated as a result of meditation. Meditation is a meta-level practice in developing your wholehearted living, uh, your wholehearted life in some ways. And I've personally been meditating for 20 years and I have recorded a free guided meditation audio. If you want to record, if you want to download it, just go right here uh, to click on this um, link in the mind map to get the meditation recording. And I'll also link link it up in the description below. It's 2000books.com slash meditate. Grab that meditation audio because it is really good. I, I personally think that is one of the easiest forms of meditation you can pick up and you can do it every single day for 15 minutes and you'll start to see the, um, the benefits of it. It is hardcore mindfulness meditation. So the ultimate key for wholehearted living, in my opinion, is meditation. And that's a practice we all should and can develop. All right, by the way, uh, so Brene Brown has a very powerful TED Talk. And the link, I will, again, it's in the spreadsheet. So in, it's in this uh, mind map. So I'll leave it right here. By the way, make sure to get this mind map so that you have all these links to the podcast episodes and our courses and the meditation audio, audio and all that stuff. Just go to 2000books.com slash self or go click right here on this i button or i'll leave the link right here as well 2000books.com slash self right so click on the i button you you will be able to easily find these ideas very quickly and just jog your memory and find whatever is really good also guys if you enjoyed this book summary make sure to subscribe to our channel right here there's a lot of other great book summaries on our channel over 60 great book summaries so you i'm sure you're going to enjoy those as well all right guys see you next time Bye bye